There are many dark and sinister parts of our history that many society chooses to forget and hide behind closed doors. But there was one particular event in the past that was truly dreadful. One of the most disturbing events in the history of humankind was the sickening idea of human zoos. It all started in the late 1800s, where the theory of evolution that many anthropologists at that time believed that human emerged from ape-like species was on the rise. The future evolution of human society. The evolution of the human race. Keep these feeble-minded, segregated, and dilute the quality of American citizens. Do not like this exhibition of one of our race with the monkey. No one was ever a monkey. One of these events, or exhibits, is where 20 million people from all over the world would flock to see the biggest attraction dubbed as the Man's Greatest Achievement World Fair in 1904 where people from different secluded indigenous tribes were to be exhibited for scientific study and for the public's entertainment. This huge establishment was led by the well-known scientist William McGee. He was only one of the many organizers around the world of human zoos. McGee believed in the idea that by exhibiting humans in confinement from different tribes from all over the globe would be a great way of showing to the public and the scientific community that these people are closely related to or may even be a direct descendant of the primates. It was a very inhumane way of treatment towards them who were not only discriminately labeled as lower forms of humans but were deliberately forced to perform in front of a crowd for food and very little money. A former missionary in the Congo by the name of Samuel Phillips Werner was tasked to bring Congolese pygmies to the World Fair in 1904. This was the letter sent from William McGee to secure 12 pygmies for the World Fair event. And along his recruitment, slave traders sold him a captured and defenseless pygmy boy that lost his entire family to an attack on his tribe. His name was Otobenga. Otobenga, together with the pygmies from different tribes, were brought to the World's Fair in 1904. How he convinced the pygmies to voluntarily join him to go to the U.S. was a mystery. But before his arrival in the Congo, Werner was said to be heavily armed with hunting gear. Upon arrival in the U.S., they were studied, placed in confined spaces, and exhibited to the public and asked to perform dances and their practices. The unimaginable humiliation they must have endured to be compared and treated like monkeys and apes. After seven months of being exhibited and performing for audiences, the pygmies were given 15 cents each for their participation, and they were brought back to the Congo. But sadly, Otobenga, who was now an orphan, and according to Werner, had no home back in the Congo, he was brought back to the US to be left at the American Museum of Natural History for employment. And later on, with an unfortunate fate, he was moved to the Bronx Zoo to be exhibited like one of the animals. He was placed together with the monkeys and even made him the main attraction of the Bronx Zoo. William Hornaday, the director of the zoo, noticed that by exhibiting Otabenga, more people were increasingly visiting the zoo. This infuriated the African-American community and the minister of the churches. They demanded the removal of this exhibit saying that Odobenga is a normal human being just like us and he should be treated like one. They argued that rather than putting him in enclosures to be exhibited, why not place him in an orphanage or a school? But despite this, he was not removed from the zoo. In defense, Hornaday's statement says he was merely an employee of the zoo taking care of the monkeys. As Otabenga became more and more popular to the public, thousands of people would constantly visit his exhibit and Otabenga would be poked fun at, tormented, and humiliated. Our race we think is depressed enough without exhibiting one of us with the apes. We think we are worthy of being considered human beings. This made Otabenga restless and aggressive, became violent and fought with zookeepers. 
This posed a problem for Hornaday and later was forced to give Otabenga to the Howard Collard Orphan Asylum where he would be taken care of by a family and be given a good education. But he was always having a difficult time adjusting to the western lifestyles of the people where he would prefer to stay out in the wilderness and would constantly say he would rather go back to his homeland. But unfortunately, he was not permitted to go back to the Congo because of the ongoing European warfare in Central Africa and the country was deemed unsafe for travel. Sadly, after a few years, Otobenga, who grew up in an unfamiliar environment, who was confused, traumatized, and was longing for home, took his own life, believing that his spirit may return to his homeland. In the same event, in 1904, more than 1,000 Filipinos were brought to the U.S. to be exhibited in the 1904 World's Fair. And among the Filipinos were the Igorot, who were said to be the most popular attraction in the human zoos because of their many practices and performances. They were labeled by the public as savage, headhunting dog eaters. And because of their popularity, their ringleader, Dr. Truman Hunt, found a big financial opportunity to exhibit them in another amusement park for profit. Hunt have promised the Igorots that they will be well taken care of and would be compensated for their participation. Though it was illegal, Hunt would later recruit and import more Igorots from the Philippines to be exhibited in many more amusement parks around the U.S. As more and more people come to see the Igorots exhibited in many amusement parks, federal authorities would begin to investigate Hunt's operations. The investigation showed that the Igorot people were treated horribly and were placed in living conditions consisting of very small tents underneath the amusement park roller coaster. They were merely treated as commodities and zoo animals, and Hunt's promise that they would be compensated never happened. When asked, Hunt stated that the Igorots, as an individual, has no need for money. And before the authorities have gathered enough evidence to put him away and send the Igorots home, Hunt escaped and hid the Igorots. In pursuit of Hunt, fortunately, he was later found by the authorities and was sentenced to 11 months in jail. But later on, it was found that he was released for mistrial and was never found again. The Igorots were later found to be scattered around the U.S., sold to different fairs and carnivals, illegally exhibited and forced to perform. Some of them tried to escape and some of them were not accustomed to the very cold weather of the land, became ill and passed away. For the lucky ones that were caught by the American authorities, they were brought back to their homeland in the Philippines to rejoin their people. And after many controversies and criticism, many establishments continue to exhibit humans in enclosures all throughout the world. It is certainly dangerous that a predetermined perception of a person or an entire race could lead to so much hate and inequality. And it is important for us to remember the grueling history of these events in order for us to understand, learn, and pay our respects to those who suffered, and most importantly, to avoid these kind of mistakes from ever happening again.